This week we're talking about proportional relationships and also something called a uh, unit cost, which basically means how much each unit in a package, for example, might cost. So if you've got a you know, package of candy bars, for example, that you bought for a dollar and there were four in there, um, well, the unit price would be 25 cents. You would divide the dollar by four and get a quarter or 25 cents each. And that's what this question is asking us here. Taylor bought eight comic books for $18. Uh, each comic book costs the same amount. What is the unit cost or unit price? You might see it that way. In other words, how much is each comic book? Well, what we would simply do is take 18 and divide it by 8, like so. And uh, 8, of course, and let's go ahead and put us a few zeros in our decimals here. This is going to go in here twice without going over. Uh, this will give us 16 with a remainder of 2. And I'm going to bring down my zero here. This will go in here... Um, uh, again, about twice without going over. And we're going to multiply that and get 16 again. And uh, here we're going to have 4 left over and bring our 0 down. And this is going to go in here finally evenly at uh, 5. So we've got 2.25. Well, that's not the it, uh, or not the end of it. It's asking us what the unit cost is. So basically, our unit is $2.25. Okay, and that's how you find unit cost every time or unit price, or it maybe even uh, other things that we'll show you here in a second. Using the information from the last question, how many comic books can Taylor buy for $27? Well, we know that eight comic books will cost us $18, so we can, we can either say um, the unit price um, and, and divide it into the 27. What I want to do is use those rates and proportions like we used last week, and to me it's much easier because we seem to have a pretty good grasp on that. So we can put um, comic books here, and then uh, price, and then we would have eight over um, over eighteen, and the price here is going to be twenty seven dollars. But we don't know how many comic books we can buy. That's what the question is asking us. And of course, we would um, uh, we would cross multiply here, and say eight times twenty seven, or twenty seven times eight. Uh, 216. Well, if this times this is 216, in order for this to be proportional, this times this has to be 216. And we would say this algebraically, 18x equals 216. And now we've got a one-step equation where we would just solve for the variable. Well, our poor little x is being multiplied by 18, so we would divide by 18 here. And this would cancel out, and we're left with 216 divided by 18. Eighteen will go in, and let's go ahead and do this just in case we need these. Eighteen will go into twenty-one once. I got a left over or sorry, a remainder of three, and I'm gonna bring down my six. Thirty-six. So I got eighteen will go into thirty-six twice. And then I'm going to have 36 here for a remainder of 0. So 12, remember 12 is not the end of it. It means that basically we can buy 12 comic books for $27. And we done this, or we did this all last week. We just got to figure out what goes together. Um, and it's never going to hurt you to go ahead and label it. That way you know exactly which one to put on top because you might boo-boo here and put 27 on top. Well, of course, that's incorrect. You would want the 27 to go on bottom with the price. Okay, and again, we got that information from question one. Again, this is dealing with unit um, uh, unit measurements here. A train travels 120 miles in one and a half hour, one and a half hours. At this rate, how many miles can the train travel in five hours? We can do this one of two ways. We can say, well. I can figure out how many miles per hour I would travel by dividing 120 by 1.5 and then multiplying that by 5, or I could set up a um, uh, proportion like we did last week, and that's the way I'm going to do it. Um, so we can put miles and then hours, and go ahead and label it. Miles is 120. The first one is 1.5. Well, what's the second one? Five hours. We're going to put five here. And, of course, X is going to go here because we don't know what it is. 
X is going to go there because we don't know what it is. I'm going to try a bigger marker here. It might help out a little bit. So now we're left, we have to multiply these two. And 120 times 6, it, oh, sorry, times 5 is 600. Well, if that's true, then this times this, 1.5 times X must be 602. So we're going to say 1.5 X equals 600. We're going to divide both sides by 1.5, just like we've been doing all last week. And so now we've got 600 in the house and 1.5 outside of it. Well, we can't do that, of course. We have to move this decimal over once. So we're going to end up with 15 into 6,000. And this is going to go in here, of course, 400 times. Trust me on the math on that. So it can, the, the train can travel 400 miles in five hours. And that's how you would do that one. Number four, what is 18% of 60? Um, if you can imagine, uh, you know, there's a sale on a, a, maybe a sweater that's $60 and they're saying, well, it's 18% off. Well, you want to know how much of a discount you're getting. 18% of 60. Well, you can't just, of will help us indicate that we're going to multiply, but you can't just multiply by 18. So you get a really, really high number and that wouldn't be the case. You have to convert a percent to a decimal, which you do that by moving the decimal place to the left twice. So you're going to end up with 0.18 times 60. Well, let's just bring this out here. 60, 0.18. This is going to be 0, 48. Oops. Have a 0 down here and a 60. I'm going to get 0, 8, and 10. But i got to move my decimal place over twice, so I'm going to be here and here. $10, or 10.8. And I'm going to have to go back to this other pen because this one's not working. Okay. Miss, uh, Mr. Collins is planning a party for his homeroom class. There are 30 kids in the homeroom, and he wants to give each of them 8 ounces of juice. A, um, a jug of juice contains 40 ounces. So at this rate, how many jugs of juice will he need for the party? Well, we know that we have to multiply 30 times 8 to figure out how much juice we need all in, in all. We need 30 times 8. 30 kids times 8 ounces for a total of 0, 240 ounces. We need 240 ounces. Well, if each container is 40 ounces, can I just divide this by this, by 40, and see how many containers I'll need? So we'll say 240 divided by 40. And this will be 6. Let's make sure we're right here. Yes, 6 containers. If you're having a hard time with that one, I want you to go back and watch this video a few times because this is one of the more difficult problems. This is very similar to what we had before. Mrs. Simpson drove 105 miles in two and a half hours. What was Miss Simpson's speed in miles per hour? Well, if you drove this far in two and a half hours, what we would need to do is divide this by this to figure out how many miles per hour she drove. And we can do this a number of different ways. We could convert that to a decimal, say 2.5 into 105. Or we could simply convert it to a um, both of these into a uh, improper fraction and do it that way. It doesn't matter to me how you do it. But you've got to make sure you get the decimal right if you do this. If you have you know, 3 over 8, it's going to be a little bit harder to convert. So I'm going to go ahead and make this. We've got to divide 100 divided by 2.5. I'm going to convert these both to improper fractions and do it that way because to me that's the easiest way. This is going to be 100 over 1 divided by, uh, what is this, 5 over 2. Well, we can't just divide straight across. We have to keep change and flip. So we'll end up with 100 over 1 times 2 over 5. And here we just multiply straight across. We'll have 200 over 5, 
And what that means is 200 is going to go in the house. Outside of 5, this will go 4, 20, 0, 0, and 0. Our answer is 40, but that's not the end of it. It says, what is our what was Mrs. Simpson's speed in miles per hour? It will be 40 miles per hour. This is another rate, or, or excuse me, a proportion problem that we can easily solve with uh, some of the problems we did last week. A restaurant charges a single price for its buffet. The total bill for a table of six was $294. Then we're saying another table had eight people. What was their total bill? A second table had eight people with a buffet, or with everybody had a buffet. What was the total bill at the second table? Well, can't we set up a proportion just like we did before? In other words, we have six people. And the cost down here, 294. And then we have eight people over on this scenario, and we don't know how much the cost was. Can't we do that? And then we can multiply this out. If we cross multiply, we know they have to equal. So we say 294 times 8 is going to give us 2, carry my 3, 75, carry my 7, that's going to be 16, 23. So in other words, this times this is going to equal this. Well, if that's the case, then we know that 6 times x must also equal this. And algebraically, we'd write that 6x equals... 2,352. Now we have a two-step equation. We'll divide by 6. This cancels out. And we're left with 2,352 divided by 6 here. This will go in here three times without going over. This will give me 18 with a remainder of 5. I'm going to bring this 5 down. Forgive my writing. I know it's small. This will go in here 9 times without going over. That's 54 with a remainder of 1. Bring down my 2. And this goes in here evenly at 2. $392. And you can do any almost any of these problems that we had this week like so. Example number 8. On a test, Raw answered the first 22 questions in five minutes. So we could set this one up like this. Questions and minutes. 22 and five minutes. There are a total of 77 questions on the test. If he continues to answer the questions at the same rate, in other words, at the same speed, he uses about the same amount for each one, how long will it take him to complete the test from start to finish? Well, can I put a 77 over here for the number of total questions and an X down here for how many minutes that we don't know yet? And then can I cross multiply here and say 77 times 5 is 35, carry my 3, and I got 35 again, 38 for a total of 385. Well, if that's the case, isn't this times this, 22 times X, 385 as well? 22x equals 385. And now we have a one-step equation. I divide by 22 on each side. And it's not going to go evenly, but that's okay. It's, there is such a thing as a half a minute. So we will divide like so. We're going to put 385 in the house. And 22 is going to go on the outside like so. 22, and let's go ahead and put our decimal points here and bring that up. 22 will go into 38 once without going over with a, with a remainder of 16. I'm going to bring my 5 down. Okay. 22 will go into 165 about 7 or 8 times. Let's try 7. So we got 4 here. I'm going to carry my 1. That's 150 with a remainder of 11. Bring down my zero. And 22 will go into 110 about five times. We're going to multiply that out. And again, forgive me, I'm running out of room. Yeah, with a remainder of zero. 
So 17.5, but we got to make sure we put our unit in there. 17.5 minutes. And by the way, that's way too fast. <laughs> if someone is answering 77 questions in 17 and a half minutes, they better slow down and make sure they get them right. All right. Number nine. Killen knows that a 45-ounce pitcher can hold enough lemonade for six people. At this rate, how many ounces of lemonade will Kendall need to serve 26 people? Well, um, we can put ounces right here and people. Ounces would be 45. That will serve six people. We want to know, how about 26 people? And, of course, we'll have the X there. And by the way, you can put the other one on top if you want, but you just got to make sure you're consistent throughout that always the ounces will go on top and people on bottom or vice versa. You can flip those around. It doesn't matter to me. So now we got to multiply. We got to cross multiply here or get the, something called the cross product. So we have 45 times 26. and get our answer of 1170. Well, if that's the case in this times this or 6x or 6 times x must equal this too. So we have 6x equals 1170. We're going to have to divide both sides by 6. And the more of these I do, the more the faster I'm going to go. You can rewind the tape. That'll cross out. I'm going to be stuck with 1170 divided by 6. This will go once. Remainder of five. I'm running out of room again. I'm sorry. Bring down my seven. This is going to go in here um, nine times. And this is 54. And that'll be a remainder of three, but I'll bring down my zero from here. And this will be five. It'll go in there evenly. And we know we'll need 195 ounces. Number 10 is exactly the same. We would set this up. Um, of uh, We have fertilizer here and of how many square feet of lawn. We'd have 50 over 75 and then um, 120 feet here. Of course, we would cross multiply here and we would get uh, 6,000. Well, if that's the case, and this times this must be seven or six thousand seventy-five x equals six thousand. And just take my word for it. If you divide those out, you will get x equals eighty. So that means I need um, eighty pounds of fertilizer because six thousand divided by seventy-five is eighty. And again, you can work that out on your own. Again, it's very, very similar product, uh, uh, problem here. Uh, if a, a factory uses, um, let's say we say steel and copper, a factory uses 15 pounds of steel for every 18 uh, pounds of copper. How much copper will the factory use for uh, 2,700 pounds of steel? This is where, because these numbers are very close, this is where you're going to need to make sure you label it so you don't get them confused. And this, of course, is going to be X. And then you're going to multiply these out. Um, you're going to multiply 2,700 times 18. And again, I'll let you do the math on that on your own, but you will end up with 48,600. Well, if this times this is 48,600, then 15 times X must be the same. 15X equals 48,600. You're going to divide both sides by 15. And again, I'm going to let you do the math on your own here. But you'll end up with 3,240 pounds. So as long as you know how to set it up, I'll let you do the math. I showed you how to do the math on several of these. I'm going to let you do the math on these on your own. I just want you to see how to set the problem up. And finally, I'll work this one out to completion down here. This is a very similar problem again. A computer downloads a 48 kilobyte file in five seconds. At this rate, how long will it take the computer to download a file that was 120 kilobytes? Well, let's set it up the very same way. 
and we'll say kilobytes here and then time here or seconds here. Well, we've got 48 over 5. At this rate, how long will it take a computer to download a file that is 120 kilobytes? This is why it's very important for you to label these. That way you don't get confused. Well, we know that we can cross multiply and get the same answer. 5 times 120 is 600. Well, if that's the case, then we know that 48 times x must also be 600. So we have 48x equals 600. We'll divide both sides by 48. This will cancel out, so we're left with 600 in the house. Divided by 48. I'm going to go ahead and put a decimal here and a few more out here. This will go in here. It won't go into 6, but it will go into 60 once with a remainder of 12. Bring down my zero. This will go in here um, <clears throat> about twice without going over. 48 times 2 is 96. That's a remainder of 24. Bring down my zero, and this will go, 48 will go into uh, 240 about five times. And if I multiply that out, it does equal 240, and we're done. Well, that doesn't make any sense, Mr. Kent. That says 12.5. Well, we can have a, such a thing as half a second, no problem. So the answer is 12.5 seconds. More to come.